My name is Joyce McCauley Benner. Like many college students, I wanted to move away from home and experience life on my own. I chose to move 1,100 miles away one summer, and I ended up working two jobs to support that dream. One of my jobs was at a restaurant. There was a cook in the restaurant who showed some favoritism toward me one night. The other servers were annoyed as my orders came out faster and better and my tips increased. I didn't think much of it until I was pushed inside a freezer and the cook started to make sexual advances towards me. No matter the number of times I broke free, the same thing would happen again. Later that night, he raped me. For the next several weeks, I tried to just keep my life barely intact and my classes at a passing level. About two months later, I went to the on-campus health center for a checkup and I asked the nurse if I was pregnant. She assured me I wasn't and kept telling me that it would be negative. I wanted to believe in her confidence, but I had this nagging feeling that I was pregnant. Five minutes passed and the clock ticked mercilessly. I don't know how to take care of a baby. I'm not ready to be a mother. I don't have any health coverage. I can't do this now. She comes quietly back into the room and quietly lays the positive test down in front of me. I begged her to tell me what to do. She told me to take a prenatal vitamin, find a doctor, and be on my way. I walked out in a daze. Was the cook this baby's dad? Some jerk who hurt me for fun? As when he was done, in spiteful laughter, he said, see you around, bitch. Could that moment and all of its ugliness possibly foster a child? Or did this baby belong to me and my boyfriend, whom I had been with in loving times and fun-filled times? I would have to wait until the birth to know. Despair came in fast and furious. Either way seemed a dead end. Surely either way was hard. Did I think about abortion? Sure. I wanted so badly for the pain to go away, the unknowing. But even an abortion wouldn't put the question of paternity to an end. And I still didn't know what to do. I was in a new town, I had no family, few friends, no health insurance, and not a clue as to how to take care of myself during a pregnancy. So one day, I make a desperate phone call home to one of my friends. She made a comment to me that I'll never forget. She, she said, Joyce, I know you're going through so much right now, and all you're feeling is despair and pain and loneliness but I want you to know that no one feeling will last forever. An abortion will. And that hit me like a ton of bricks. <laughs> so upon deeper reflection, I realized that while I did not know who the father of my baby was, yet I did know who his mother was. And that was me. There was as much of me inside this baby as there was the rapist or my boyfriend. How could I discount and allow yet another piece of me to, take, to be taken away? I didn't have much, but I had enough. So I moved back home, and I had my baby boy. My boyfriend did not sign the paternity papers, as we still didn't know if he was the dad or not, and his friends and family told him not to. It would take three months to learn who the dad was. But it didn't matter to me as much anymore. In Joshua McCauley's eyes and tender hands, I saw that part of me needing support, needing love, and very fragile, but also full of life. I had persevered through it all and tapped into a strength within myself that I never knew I had. I think we as women can sell ourselves short sometimes. The status quo will tell you that we can't do it, that we shouldn't do it, or force us to choose between our desires as women, and our dreams as mothers. But I am here to tell you that women deserve better choices than that.
I said no to the status quo, and in doing so, I achieved my own victory over violence.